Yeah, greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Tanzania uh, preparation uh, tour information. And today's date is November 2nd, and uh, that means we're two weeks away from our journey of a lifetime to Tanzania, which is November 16th, departing and returning uh, November 27th. So Greens family, hopefully everyone is doing well and everyone is very excited and ready to join the journey of a lifetime. Yeah. And Yes. And definitely thank everyone for joining us. And uh, now unfortunately, sometimes not everyone can make it, but um, we'll have everything recorded. So what I want to do is just start off with just, you know, a basic uh, introduction so we can just get introduced. And then once others uh, come in, then they can just introduce themselves. All right. So yes, Sam, and also um, uh, this is my fourth uh, Tanzania journey, and we started doing this journey in November 2020, and we've done three se consecutive uh, journeys in November 2021 and also 2022. So this is our fourth journey, and a few things have been adjusted, but we just as time go along, you just kind of keep the best flow of the schedule. Yeah. So definitely going to get into talking about the tour overview, the tour itinerary, and the preparation list. Uh, those are all of the things that's on the uh, website. And then to show you where you can see some of the uh, previous Tanzania tour videos uh, on YouTube. Uh, so yes, I'm not sure who would like to uh, start uh, with the introductions. Or you can also tell us um, you know, what you're looking forward to on the journey, just trying to get a you know, basic dialogue from everyone. So at least some of us uh, know something about some of us. And then the rest of the people that you know, you'll meet in Amsterdam and then we can just continue with the introductions. Oh, from, okay. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. All right. uh, Joanne, um, you want to go ahead? I will. I'm Joanne. I'm from New York. I'm living in South Carolina now. I'm looking forward to going ten to Tanzania to just explore some parts of maybe, you know, my roots and also uh, take some footage, uh, bring back some memories, look at some history. I'm excited to be going and excited to meet some people on the journey. Definitely appreciate your introduction. Yes, you look very excited. So that's why we want happy faces, happy smiles. Yes. All right, my name is um, Paulette Jumbo. Let me just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Jumbo! <laughs> um, I have been studying key Swahili for the last three months, so I am going to try to use it. I'm excited about using it and excited about learning other people's culture and just absorbing um, as much as I can. It'll be my fifth time to the motherland. I got so many more journeys to go. And I'm just so happy that I got a chance to take this journey with Bumani and his people. And um, I met him, Joanne, through Nisi Davis's daughter, Kim. Kim went to Ghana with M M Bumani, and that's how I met him. Um, so I'm excited. I got my three cameras and my six bathing suits. So I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. That's excellent. Well, yes, appreciate the uh, connection and the energy. And yes, um, Kim was one of our good sisters that traveled with us to Ghana in December 2022. So appreciate her, you know, recommending the journey to you as we go from West Africa to now East Africa. Mm -hmm. And I can go in order. Greetings, my, my Jamaican sister, Azanet. Greetings, sister. Hi, happy greetings. How are you? Yes. Happy nice to have to your support your face. energy. Uh, well, you know, I'm all over the YouTube and all over the internet. So I'm not sure if people take time to look at the videos and the pictures, but we, just, we record and document everything. So, and then we do a lot of these live calls also. But yeah, good to physically, good to see you in the flesh, in the Thank vision. Thank you. And looking forward to meeting you when we get there Absolutely. and everyone else in Amsterdam. But yeah, so let's get an introduction from yourself. I'm Asinette Wheeler Russell. I live in Brooklyn, New York, originally from Jamaica. I cannot wait to do this journey of a lifetime. It's been my dream and on my bucket list forever. And when Paulette reached out to me and said, Asinet, I am going to Africa. I was like, I'll be there with you, girl. <laughs> and, I, 
you know, it's just been on my bucket list and I've been like putting it off for years. And I was like, I have to go, I have to make this one. Yes. And I'm looking forward to it and look forward to seeing all of you guys. Yay. Excellent. Excellent. Appreciate it. Uh, Joel, um, you ready? My name is Joel Morris and I'm from Los Angeles. And mm. uh, this is my uh, fourth trip to the continent. And I'm mm. uh, just glad to be going. Um, Tanzania is a place that I've always wanted to go, not to mention other parts of Africa as well. I love my people. I love all everybody here. I love your energy and everything here. So uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be a great trip, regardless of what goes down, <laughs> because I'm the type of person who I just enjoy wherever we go. And uh, I'm one of those people that I was said I was told that just I'm just laid back and chill. So basically, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Good. <laughs> Appreciate your energy. Absolutely, absolutely. And I had some some other good brothers out. They couldn't make the call, and maybe some of them will come on. But uh, we do have brothers on a journey. <laughs> hey, we're gonna have a great time. <laughs> yes, uh, my sister Eugenia. Uh, uh, let's. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, Eugenia, yep. yes, okay. Yes, go. this is Eugenia. I live in um, Bonnier, Georgia right now, but I live in Washington, D.C. area. So I'm originally from Florida, believe it or not. And I went to Ghana last year and, and I heard about the trips. And I was like, uh uh, I got to go on this one. I must go. So I'm excited about um, going on this trip, more for educational purposes as well. Yes. <laughs> well, definitely. Uh, that is. Um... That's perfect because, uh, you know, we, you know, we do a whole lot of education. Um, you know, there's four museums on the journey, which I'll go through also. Uh, but uh, tell us uh, how you got connected to this journey uh, more so uh, directly. You, you, you mentioned you went to Ghana. And that's yes. Um, yeah, the R Ralford, a uh, young man died from my hometown. Uh, Ralford went with you. I forgot what year. But then he went back to Ghana afterwards and then he married a woman from Ghana wow. <laughs> and so he's going back and forth <laughs> from uh, Orlando to Ghana he's trying to get his wife over here so she he's come over and uh to Ghana then he goes back he works and he comes back his sister moved there last month uh she picked up everything and moved she lived in uh, Key Largo for so many years and she bakes and what have you so she got a whole house on it <laughs> On, on the way to Ghana and the brother's going to be there and then her niece is going over there I'm like what is going on so I just go to visit <laughs> absolutely and I'm, I'm out with some people that you know 17 years earlier we sparked an incredible energy of basically just going to Ghana consistently for you know well over a decade and building the energy and yes. it's become something you know very popular uh, so just happy to see people connect and moving around because you know oh, yeah. we're in a global world and, you know, like sometimes people try to tell us we need to stay in America or stay where, stay one place while everyone else in the world, including the Chinese, the Indians and so on, they're yes. all over the world and definitely all over Africa uh, and join uh, holidays, uh, business investment, networking, mm -hmm. living, doing all those good things. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm always telling us as a people that, uh, you know, we look at Africa underrated, but it's, uh, it's, it's the future of the world that we live in. And yes. you know, this is a way of how us get connected to the you know, the countries. You know, like you mentioned, Rutherford, when he traveled, we, we, I had no idea that he would do any of those things. Uh, <laughs> but, it, but the thing of it is, it was, it was very open and, you know, he was excited and ready. Yes. And those are the things that happen, you know, like we have people that's living, doing business and, you know, living a different life away from, you know, uh, the cold and certain other aspects of America, which is you know, not in East and West Africa. Uh, so, Mr. Bomani, uh, you're up next for our introduction. <laughs> so thank everyone for their introduction and we can definitely dialogue some more. So once you're on our website, Africa for the Africans.org, I made sure I organized everything in the Tanzania link uh, from the main menu or on the front page. <laughs> And this is the list of uh, articles. So the main thing I want to go over, uh, do, go over the overview quick, uh, that go through that itinerary and then go through some aspects of the departure reminder list, uh, which is the preparation list. So those are the main things. And then uh, once I go through one set of things, 
uh, one segment, uh, just open things back up to see if anybody have any questions or want to dialogue about any of the information. All right, so this is the overview as we scroll down. All right, so everyone have their tickets, uh, whether they got it through myself or got it through um, uh, on their own. Uh, so all of this, the sequence that we have, we'll work it out to where uh, we're all connected in Amsterdam. And for those who are not connected in Amsterdam, uh, we'll meet with you when we get to Tanzania in Arusha. Uh, so all those things, the things that work out, it's um, you don't always have everyone that travels to, with you. And then sometimes you have people that meet you in a country. Yeah. So those are the two things that you just work out. Uh, but the main thing is always to make sure that you have your ticket. Everything looks good. All your details are clear on it. Uh, and some flights, you may be able to select tickets, uh, seats. Um, and then some flights, you may not be able to select uh, seats. It's one of those weird things when we do these international routes with different airlines. And the different airlines that we have all together is uh, Delta, KLM, and uh, Kenya Airways, which is part of the uh, Delta Sky team. Uh, so makes it nice and smooth to get around uh, Europe and Africa. And so the things I always want to just make sure that everyone is clear on is just what the tour includes. So the tour includes our transportation uh, throughout Tanzania. That's all of our movement. Uh, and that also includes your ferry boat um, transport uh, from Zanzibar to Dar es Salaam. Uh, daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. So the hotels will provide uh, breakfast um, and usually it's just available in the morning from seven to nine, seven to 10. Uh, so that's you during the time when we need to get ourselves ready because we usually need to be ready by at least by 8.30. So if you have your breakfast by eight o'clock um, and everyone is ready by 8.30, we just push out between 8.30 and nine o'clock. So that's the daily flow. And then some days things may be a little bit different where we have to leave early because of a flight or certain things. All right. And then as far as our lunch, which is not included, um, throughout the day, we just find the best place for everyone to just have lunch. Sometimes we may need to order ahead of time, but since it's a small group, we can just uh, do our orders um, and just be finished and move on to the next part of our schedule. Right. The hotel accommodations is three and four star hotels as uh, comfortable and organized and nice and clean as you know, we can uh, make to where you're very comfortable. Uh, and so doing a tour itinerary, I'll go through the three hotels that we have on the uh, schedule. Uh, entrance and access to all sites and activities. So all of the entrance fees uh, for all the museums, all the things we're doing uh, is uh, included. Uh, well, if you wanna do daily exercise and meditation, uh, we're, all, you know, we're always open for a volunteer or you can come down and free flow exercise and meditation. This was popular when we had bigger groups. We usually I have one or two people that was always open to doing some kind of morning exercise, yoga and things like that. But since then, I kept it on and then just kind of just look for people who are open to it. I certified as uh, English speaking uh, tour guide since that's the language that we all speak in America. I, want, I always make sure that uh, wherever we go, um, that, you know, because whatever country you go to, you know, people speak their local language. So a certified English speaking tour guide is basically saying it's someone that you're going to be able to understand and um, someone that can understand you. So that's uh, the main thing. And, and uh, what's uh, not included is uh, the $100 group tips, which we spread around to take care of all of our movements and accommodations and the people who take care of us. And, and any cam camcorder or camera fees, uh, I wouldn't know about, but uh, if that's something that they create, then you just pay them if you have a camcorder or a camera. Uh, usually no one bothers you using your phone. It does sometimes some sites, you know, certain museums, and it's uh, very few over the years, right? And also, what's not included is your beach res beach resort massages and any individual beach activities. The beach activities that we have together as a group is the sunset cruise in Zanzibar. Everything else, you know, you'd have to just uh, work out. Uh, so that's the quick uh, flow through of what's included and what's not included. And this is an overview of the of. Uh, Kilimanjaro and Arusha, uh, the four nights, which I'm going to go through in the itinerary, and then also Zanzibar, uh, three nights, and see if, and Dar es Salaam, two nights. So that is a quick overview. Um, but before I get to the itinerary, I wonder if anybody have any questions or if anyone wants to talk about anything that I've went through, especially about what's included and what's uh, not included.
are we going to be able to visit the national parks or anything? Did that is that? Yes, uh, we have the Arusha National Park. So I'm okay. go through the detail on that um, as I go through the day to day uh, schedule. Okay. Um, now, what, what were the uh, airlines that you mentioned? Delta, KLM, and Kenya. And Kenya Airways. Those are the three airlines that we're working with to do our flights uh, with our bookings. Thank you. And just to let you guys know, they all three have different confirmation numbers. Okay. Yes, for the most part, uh, it has things like that. I'm trying to remember. Uh, mine, my one confirmation number work with the other airlines, um, but in some cases, you may have to log into that airlines. Right. Uh, like KLM. Um. But sometimes it depends on how they, they do the bookings when we do the, the bookings. Sometimes they put you over to the Delta system and you may be also be put over to the KLM system. But the Delta system, they allow you to just do all your, your seats and things like that. How much money should we bring? Uh, I would say anywhere from um, a few hundred dollars, like five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, and that's all based on your shopping and what you're looking to do for lunch and also for uh, maybe nightlife and other activities. Should you bring large bills, small bills, what? Uh, yes, perfect question. Uh, always bring large bills. I uh, get a better um, conversion rate uh, for your bigger bills. Okay. Yeah. What's the conversion rate for now? It's uh, 2300 to uh, one US dollar. And that's um, give or take, and maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, we can al always look at the updated conversion, but it's been consistent over the last few years, around 2300 more or less for one year. They also dollar. got an app that can uh, tell you what you know the conversion rate is, too. So if anybody wants to know, um, you know, you can check the app. Yes, you can always use one of those uh, trends, uh, one of those uh, converter apps. Yeah. So this, so right here, what I have is the itinerary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute, I'm going to mute everyone. And then what you can do when you need to talk, you can just unmute yourself. That way we have a good recording. All right, so I have everybody muted. So let me just go through the itinerary, and this, uh, if you have this, uh, if you have any questions with itinerary, just uh, make some notes. Uh, as soon as I'm finished, we can just uh, go through any question everyone anyone have. So as you scroll down our website for the itinerary, uh, day one, Thursday, November sixteenth. So that's all set to where we just all have our individual flights. So we're not going to meet up in Atlanta because most people are not connecting to Atlanta, and our flight situation uh, is different for everyone flying. Uh, so the next thing is uh, we all just make sure that we have all of our bags in order and make sure all of our bags are uh, tagged and you know, with keys and make sure that uh, you know, we have everything in there that we need. And if you're just looking to get rid of everything, the first half of the first part of the journey, so you can have one bag when you're flying domestic, uh, then it's ideal. And then also the second bag, you can just do a whole lot of shopping in Zanzibar and also uh, uh, Dar es Salaam. Uh, so let's make sure you have all your ticket details printed out, have all your stuff ready to go, and just make sure you're clear about all the things that we're going to go through. That way you have no issue. And then uh, once you get to the counter, this, uh, if you don't have seats for whatever flight, just make sure they give you the seats. And if they don't give you a seat, then they'll explain to you whatever the situation is. But that's the situation dealing with Delta and Kenya Airways. And also that's... Also, the similar situation if you book directly to them, but all the bookings were done to Delta Airlines. Uh, day two, Friday, November 17th. Uh, most of us should arrive uh, around eight o'clock or a little bit before and, or not much after. Uh, so it give you enough time to make your way to, to whatever, whatever terminal and gate that we're going to be staying at. So usually the first set of us that uh, get there, we usually take a photo or something and text to the group page. So this is when we really use the WhatsApp page when we're just uh, traveling and communicating, uh, you know, from even doing things like, you know, when everyone get on their flight or when they get to the airport, uh, things like that, and say, I'm here. And, you know, it's a nice little communication and coordination. And for those who 
haven't seen how anyone look, you know, they'll be able to see other group members when they're in the airport. So we'll all end up this uh, meeting and connecting around 8.45 right there at the departure gate, which uh, you'll be able to be clear on uh, once you uh, get off the flight uh, in Amsterdam. And you just have to look up, either you can check your, um, your KLM or your Delta app, or if that doesn't work, you can check the screen. Uh, but I'll make sure that, um, well, I don't know who's going to get there first, but that's the situation. So just uh, take your time and read the monitor to be clear on it. Uh, the agents there can assist you. They do speak uh, English um, uh, there. Uh, and the agents will uh, be right outside the flights uh, waiting for you if you have any questions. Uh, so that is the sequence. And when we meet with us, uh, all connect and we just, uh, whatever tour materials that we can bring with us. I'll have everything else uh, will be packed in the uh, bags, in a t-shirt, bags, pens, and things like that. And uh, while we're there, uh, note to everyone, as a matter of fact, note that your departure flight from America to Amsterdam is gonna take at least about anywhere from eight to nine hours. So, you know, when you get off the flight, if you just need to get you some, you know, some coffee, get you some you know, some food or some food to go, that's ideal because you're getting back on another flight that's about nine hours. Unfortunately, you're now traveling, you know, from, you know, from West Europe all the way to the other side of Africa. All right, so once we all get to um, uh, the Amsterdam, uh, once we all get to Amsterdam airport and we all check in and get ourselves settled on the flight and everything, uh, once we get off that flight, uh, we just all meet, wait for each other after that flight. And then we just get our things uh, coordinated to where uh, we just make our way to, you know, uh, to check into uh, Kilimanjaro Airport. So that's passport control. So let's make sure that you have your visa information printed out and just keep it inside your passport. Uh, that way you have no issue. For those who don't have visas, uh, you just join the next line on the visa and arrival. Just make sure that you have all your things printed out and all the things that you need. Uh, that way you can um, process your visa and arrival. And regardless if you're in a regular line or the visa on arrival line, you're going to get out to baggage claim about the same time. So that's when we pack up our stuff. And then once we pack up our stuff, hey, son, how are you? You keep on creeping by. Uh, we pack up all of our things and just make our way out. Our tour guide will be out there waiting for us. Uh, so while you're, you know, while you're leaving through a baggage claim, there'll be two terminals for you to, ex uh, for you to you know, exchange your money. So what I recommend to everyone, because the following day in the morning, I'm gonna take everyone to a Forex Bureau where you can also exchange your money. But I always say this, you know, just get some money, uh, change over in case when you get to the hotel or maybe you want something to eat and things like that, you can pay for, they may have you know, late night dining and things like that, but, uh, or you may wanna go somewhere and get something, but uh, you have some change with you. And then the next morning, uh, day three, uh, Saturday, um, you know, it's going to be um, a full day of this uh, shopping and also just visiting two museums. So you're going to want to make sure that you have your you know, your money. So we'll make sure that first thing in the morning, we take you to those locations. And for those who need to use ATM machines, uh, you'll be able to do that also. So day three is a nice, uh, it's, um, the, you know, it's a, the first floor of the schedule, but uh, it looked like a lot of things on there. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make our way right to uh, the boat museums and the Maasai Arts and Culture Center. And then we're going to break for uh, lunch. And then from there, we're going to visit United African Alliance Community Center with Pete and Charlotte O'Neill. And uh, they were in America as basically um, their former Black Panther or Black Panthers that um, you know, made a move to uh, Tanzania to get away from you know, their political situation in America, just to put it to that point. And you know, usually when I get to a site, I let the people talk and share their history and share their information. But that's just a brief overview. Uh, so that is uh, our full schedule. And for those who are interested in this, uh, doing anything in the evening, um, the flexibility is there. We're usually in a nice location if anyone just wanna go out for a short period of time, socializing in the evening. But uh, what we have set up for, uh, for dinner is, we usually have options to, um, usually we just, if this is a good time, we just usually take our group out and we go somewhere nice for dinner. Dinner, And in some cases, and it's all based on the flow of the schedule, uh, we may have this uh, dinner there at the hotel. Uh, so try to, the goal is to mix it up to where 
the schedule flows. And if it's one of those nights where it's, you know, the time is pressing, then, you know, in the, in the daytime, we'd have already made it to where we have a dinner arranged at the hotel. So those are the sequence. So I don't want to say that uh, we're going to have dinner at the hotel this night or that night and things like that. And then for those who literally just don't want to go out and maybe just feel like you just need to get settled and we're, we're going to be going out to eat, uh, just let us know. And then what we do is just work out the situation with the restaurant. And then you can just have your meal there at the restaurant at the hotel. And then you can just, you know, go, get your rest and uh, whatever else you need to do. So the schedule uh, is flexible as far as these things. And ultimately, if someone doesn't want to go out, you know, we're not here to force anyone to go out. If you want to stay back and relax or you're tired or you're not feeling well, or understandable situations. Uh, but I definitely recommend everyone that's come out every day and enjoy it. The days are, you know, the days are long. Um, it's usually like a nine to five day, uh, nine o'clock leaving and coming back at five o'clock in that time frame. And it should be a lot uh, smoother since uh, we have a smaller group. So it's less orders on lunch and lunch is always a situation. Whatever tour you try, you're doing, you, uh, if the, the group is real big, you just usually try to order sometimes a few hours ahead of time or the day before and you know, make it work. And also on this uh, day three, for anyone who have school supplies or financial donations, uh, this is a location where we can uh, make those donations to also. Uh, day four, uh, Sunday, uh, November 19th. Sunday is always the perfect time to go to the national park. It's one hour away. So if we leave about nine o'clock, we get here at 10 o'clock and then we can um, leave, leave around two o'clock. So that is the um, setup that I have uh, for this, that situation. And since you don't have lunch there at that location, what I would recommend everyone do, and um, I'll also talk with a tour guide so they could just remind me to talk to the hotel and see if they can arrange basically a lunch to go. And you just you can just order it the night before, and then they'll have it for you in the morning, and then you can just uh, take that lunch to go. Uh, so that's our best option. Other option is also to bring snacks and things like that. And you know sometimes some people are open to missing a meal as far as lunch. Uh, so just want to make sure we have flexible options. But definitely want everyone to understand that once we get out to that rural area in Arusha, um, by the national park, there is no options there at the park for dining, uh, for lunch. Uh, so while you're on the uh, journey, we're going to be in our uh, bus. So you're going to be perfectly safe. And then we're going to be traveling along a trail. And then whether you have your binoculars or not, you know, you have access to seeing the animals. Some will get closer to and others maybe a little distance away. Uh, but it, you're looking at roughly about a three hour journey around the national park. And the same thing, uh, once we get back in, uh, we'll have some uh, dinner options and uh, which will be you know, organized ahead of time. So none of the things I would present to you or tell you uh, would ever be at the last minute. Everything will be just upfront and as we also just sharing upfront. But once you get to the country, that's when you can just get a feel of what we need to do and how the movements of things are with our dinner. And we have a list already of about three or four different restaurants uh, that we've been to and some more. Uh, on the list so we always have good options based on our location and the good thing about why you're in Arusha nothing is far outside of the one hour national park drive and also our drive from Kilimanjaro is also one hour so that's the maximum drive you're going to be doing in the uh, country so it's not like you know if you're going somewhere like Ghana where you're traveling from one country one part of the country to the next you're driving on a bus here we're doing you know we're doing domestic flights and also ferry boat transport so that's how we get to the other parts of uh uh, Tanzania. All right, so we're finished there in Arusha. Um, as um, sorry, excuse me. The the last day um, I said this for optional day, uh, but uh, maybe a situation where, um, you know, we have a few different things as far as just uh, usually we go out anyway on this optional day and take you to places that we don't have on the uh, schedule like uh, the Tanzanite experience and a few different things. And also just uh, connect you with additional shopping if anyone wanted to go back to the Maasai market. So I realize sometimes that those two days are not enough. Uh, you can also shop at the national park. So you're doing your shopping little by little. So that is our, you know, that's our four nights in uh, Arusha. 
so the hotel that we're staying at is Planet Lodge Arusha. So that is a resort, it has a swimming pool, and it's a nice little layout. So you know, I thought this would be a lot more convenient and just relaxing for our group members. Uh, so usually I present whatever whatever hotel on there, if I can find a better option or something more convenient or things like that, we just make those changes. So that's what you see uh, with that uh, hotel. So this is my fourth time uh, traveling to um, Arusha, and this is the four different hotels. And it's um, the other hotels are fine. It's just experience and options and trying to share a different experience. And this, you know, when we're ready to finalize certain things, we have a few different places that we have experienced. All right, so one of us um, open for questions on the Arusha part before we talk about the flight from Arusha to Zanzibar Island on Precision Air. So if anybody have any questions, you can just unmute yourself. Beyond that, I will continue to the next uh, segment. Hi, question about the donation to the school. How much do you recommend? Uh, anything you want to share, 5, 10, 15, 20, um, anything? 5, 10, 15, 20 shillings? Uh, U.S. dollars. Okay, thank you. And then you can also put equivalent shillings or any shillings that you may have. Okay. <clears throat> and also, um, the... Um, the rural area in Arusha, what's the temperature like? Yeah, so in Arusha, it may get a little chilly at nighttime, um, may drop down to low 70s, but uh, on average is about 80 degrees. Okay. And the ferry boat, is it indoors and outdoor? Uh, the ferry boat have an internal terminal, and then once you get on the ferry boat, you just, you know, you're just cruising across the sea across the Indian Ocean to the mainland. And how long is that? Uh, that's a one, an hour and 30 minute uh, drive. I mean, um, boat ride. So we're almost to uh, Zanzibar. Let me just uh, talk about Zanzibar and uh, I'll go through the ferry boat information. So once we uh, get on, our, it's good, this is going to be an early morning. So I have early morning wake up call for six o'clock on uh, day six, Tuesday, November 21st. Uh, so once we get ourselves organized, uh, looking to check out the hotel, get everything cleared up, that way we can depart no later than seven o'clock. And it's a 20 minute ride, so we'll get there more than enough time. And it's a small terminal. So once we get there, we'll start checking in. And by the time you get inside to security, the plane is outside. So it's a very simple uh, process. And let me see what else I have up here. Is it a small plane? It's a 60, about 50 to 60 seater. So it's only one check bags allowed. So uh, I recommend um, everyone just bring up to about, uh, bring about a hundred uh, US dollars um, in shillings. Uh, that way, you know, whatever the situation is, cause they're gonna put both bags together if you have two bags and they're gonna you know, base the weight of 23 uh, uh, kg. So anything over that, they have their calculations to where it comes out, and if you just have a 50 pound bag itself, it's closer to $100. But I'll show you the um, on the preparation list, I have the link uh, to where you can see the, the breakdown. It's uh, maybe confusing, so that's why I tell everyone to bring closer to about 100 US dollars in shillings. That way, you have cash to pay for your bags. Uh, card machine, you don't want to get stuck out there where your card machine don't work or things like that. And then you have they tell you to go to ATM machine next, you know, the ATM machine don't work. Uh, so that's why we mentioned that. So We'll make sure everybody have access to have enough, uh, you know, shillings to where you can just make sure that's a nice smooth process and we can just keep it moving. So once we, um, you know, once we check in and get on our flight, it's a short flight, a little bit over an hour. And then once we get to uh, Zanzibar, we have our, we have another bus out there waiting for us. And it's about an hour, 15 minute drive from the airport all the way to the northern part of the uh, of the island itself. Uh, so that is going to be a nice scenic drive. And you're going to go to Kenwar, which is the beach area located right below Ning Nungui. So Nungui is where we've been at the last two times. And Kenwar was where we were at, were at the first time. And as I mentioned, you know, when you first start traveling to these different countries, you're trying to just go to different places. So this resort is right there, basically right by our original resort that we stayed at. And it just reminds me of the big 
open uh, beach area. Uh, so nice place to relax and it's just a beautiful scenery. Uh, so you're definitely going to love it and enjoy it. Uh, and it looked like you're somewhere in tropical Jamaica, somewhere in tropical paradise. Uh, so East Africa does have a special vibe as far as this, you know, how the beaches look, the water is very calm and it's just a tourist uh, paradise. Uh, so definitely want to make sure that we get there ahead of time. We don't have anything on the schedule for that day. So I tell everybody to uh, check in, enjoy, and then we meet up with everyone there for dinner, uh, more than likely right there at the resort. And then you can just enjoy nightlife options on the resort and this close by. So de definitely this uh, tourist, tourist energy. Uh, so it's a lot to experience. Now the next day, uh, day seven, Wednesday, November uh, 22nd, uh, we're gonna basically do the only tour that we're doing, uh, which is this, it's a full day. So we're gonna be visiting a whole lot of historical places in Stone Town. I uh, definitely recommend everyone, make sure you bring your, you know, your waterproof poncho, your umbrella and things like that. Cause last I remember, you know, it usually rains when we get there, um, at least two out of the three, three times, but it's just that environment where, you know, rain can come at any time. So just definitely want everybody to be prepared. And if someone have issues with walking and you can't do much walking, uh, we also have the bus option we can stay in. But part of this is also a walking tour. It's a very small area we're walking around and moving around in. And we have a nice uh, lunch option uh, there at six degrees. Yeah, uh, and so once we finish there, we have you know more historical places. So this is part of where we have the African Holocaust um, experience. Uh, so we usually have, uh, you know, and I'll talk with everyone about uh, the colors. Uh, usually we just tell everyone to wear, bring a set of whites, which is the T-shirt that we have for the for the uh, Africa for Africans T-shirt. So you can always use that. And then we also just recommend a set of uh, red, black, and green. So usually just let everyone know ahead of time the, the colors that we can just, you know, make a move in and enjoy the experience. Uh, but this time would be perfect for this uh, white t-shirts. And also while you're there uh, in Stone Town, for those who want to do more shopping, uh, our goal is to make sure you get around also to do more of your shopping. So every day is set to where, you know, I want to make sure everyone that want to do their shopping have time to do their shopping. It may not be an incredible, ridiculous amount of time, but if you pace yourself from the different uh, you know, different parts of the country, you know, you'll get more than enough. And then, you know, when we close out to the end, you know, you usually have time on the last day uh, to just get up early and just, you know, do any final shopping. Uh, day eight, Thursday, November 23rd, Zanzibar Island Beach Activities. Uh, so this is a, a full free open day. And the only thing that we have scheduled is this, um, basically the sunset cruise which once we finish, which it starts at four o'clock. So once it's finished around seven, you know, we'll have uh, dinner there at the uh, resort. And then we check out in the morning and then we head for our one hour drive to Stone Town. And then we just depart on the afternoon ferry and uh, get to you know, Dar es Salaam 215. So the hotel is right uh, by the ferry boat station. So that's a good thing. So. Uh, we get a chance to relax and uh, look for somewhere nice for us to go out to enjoy dining. And uh, you know, we have a few options again from the last few uh, journeys uh, that's in the area. Uh, and so that is um, our time in Dar es Salaam where we just uh, get settled. And then the only uh, tour date that we have is the following day, uh, day 10, Saturday, November 25th. So this is where we do the two other museums. This is the Village Museum and also the National Museum. And then we have a few other places that we make our way around and then do some shopping, enjoy in a nice uh, lunch, and then make our way back to the hotel for you know, dinner or if, you know, it's a good night to go out for dinner, which would be a perfect night since we don't have to get up early the next day. Uh, enjoy a nice uh, you know, closeout night for dinner there in uh, Dar es Salaam. And just for those who want to enjoy some social nightlife, those options will be there. And then the next day, we just make sure we check out the hotel and um, we we'll arrange our dinner um, somewhere out. Um, and, you know, that's the final you know, farewell dinner. And then we just make sure everybody just get to the airport ahead of time. And then any arrangements that we need to make for anyone, you know, all those things will be prearranged and set. And then we just make sure your accommodation is set. If you need to change the ticket and stay longer, you can always do that and make your way back to Zanzibar and stay in Dar es Salaam. Uh, so those options always are flexible. And that is the uh, the flow of the uh, the uh, itinerary. 
anyone can just always go back and look at it. I'll make sure I have it in the tour book, the updated versions and fix anything that needs to be fixed as you know, we usually do when we finalize things so we can have the most uh, accurate uh, schedule. So let me know if anyone have any questions before I just briefly uh, go through some of the uh, preparation tour details. Yes, I have a question. Um, this is Paulette. Um, the last day going back home, you have departure to Atlanta. You don't have departure to New York from Amsterdam. No, everybody flight situation is different. So when you're writing a tenor, I can't put all those things on there. You just know from Dar es Salaam and you're heading back to wherever you come from. Just like on the outbound, we have Atlanta. So you have to put the city. So I got to tell everyone, just, you know, wherever you're flying from, we just make arrangements. But that's just a flow of the sequence to this, okay. uh, especially when someone is reading the schedule. Okay. And the white T-shirt and the red, black, and green is the same day? Um, no. Uh, just two different days. Okay. So That's one, all I have. Yeah, one we can do when we do the city tour in uh, Zanzibar, which is ideal because it's a, uh, it's a uh, part of the African Holocaust. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Paula, which uh, can you repeat what you're saying? No, I'm I'm done. All right, so anyone have any uh, questions about the uh, flow of the uh, tour itinerary or the overview? I do. This is Joanne. Uh, green Joanne. Hey, um, I just want to confirm that I will fly back instead of flying back into from Amsterdam back to Atlanta. I'm going back to New York and then to Atlanta, correct? Yeah, that's the thing I'm saying to everyone. Uh, um, and that's why I try to make sure we cleared it out um, like months ago. Your schedule is your flight schedule. We don't always all have the same schedule. So only person that would know about your schedule is you. So you'd have to confirm. That's why I want everyone to, to log into the airlines and make sure they're clear about their schedule and their route. My only goal is to make sure that everyone that's traveling with us to make sure that they get to the airport ahead of time or make sure that we work out arrangements. But uh, your flight, uh, I honestly can't remember your exact flight details. Uh, but all right. The only thing I'll I check it out. Yeah, the only thing I remember is that we confirmed with everyone that their flight sequence is good and no one needed any uh, changes. So um, uh, so yourself, um, Azanet and Paulette, you all should be going to New York uh, from Amsterdam. You should be connected into Kenya. And then once you get to New York, your flight should just directly go to Atlanta. That's the sequence I remember that's connecting. So hopefully that's good. But definitely, you definitely want to make sure about those things. And then uh, make sure you just uh, process your layover and things like that. I, and when right. I did set everything up, I did make sure that everyone had maximum amount of layovers from one, you know, from one, you know, one one segment to the next. But yeah, the only thing is, this, I never always remember the details. Uh, righty. got you. So perfect. All right, so let me uh, continue on. I'll just go through this, and I'll stop in some parts of it so we can just talk about it. Uh, that way, we don't save everything for last. So the first thing is this, all the, all the tour information that you would need and updates um, is on this um, page here on Africa for the Africans. And the next thing is the gratuities that we talk about. This is a list of things that uh, it covers as far as this, uh, people taking care of our accommodation and assisting us, uh, baggage movements and things like that. Uh, number three, uh, we, this one I'm re recommend and always just, uh, just read through this for everyone. Uh, for when everyone, uh, when you come, uh, do not romanticize about the country that you're coming to and any uh, notions about the country does not come with this an open energy, open mind uh, that uh, we've created around an experience that you're going to just enjoy. And um, just, you know, don't, uh, you know, don't fantasize about certain things in Africa because, you know, it's, you know, most of the countries that we're going to are developing countries. So we don't want people to you know, think that they're going to be somewhere you know, in five-star resorts and things like that. Uh, we pick great uh, hotels and resorts, but the, the reality of it is uh, every country deal with uh, as far as water and things like that. We also make sure that they take care of our, our hot water, all the basic things that we need. Uh, so I always tell everyone, if they have any issues, come talk to me and we'll talk to whatever situation to make sure that you're in a room comfortable. Uh, but you do have situations where, you know, one of the biggest situations, honestly, to everybody I'm always talking to, 
sometimes I'm wondering if the word maintenance is in the vocabulary of certain countries. Uh, so it's basically sometimes people wait for things to break then fix. So I removed us from the middle resort because I had like a few maintenance issues and I'm like, you guys, we can't keep on, I can't, we can't run around and deal with maintenance. When we get settled in a room, we want everybody to be cool and settled and things like that. And as far as a country, um, infrastructure is usually good around the parts that we go into, but some roads are rough and things. You shouldn't have to deal with any power outage or any water outage and things like that. So these are things I'm just going to as far as the things we all have to deal with in Africa. So when we're scoping out the flow, we try to make sure we minimize any of those things happening. But the reality of it is power do goes out in the country and water do go out and things like that. And the good thing about the hotels that we have, backup generator, backup water system. Uh, so that's what I tell people come and just open it because sometimes you may have this one situation in your room and you know you don't want that to ruin people's experience. They so tell them just come be open and let uh, us take care of anything that goes wrong for you. And we'll, you know, if I need to, if we need to get the tour guides involved, you know, we get them involved, but it's always your accommodation. But uh, understand that this is the energy in Africa as far as uh, you know, certain things in. Make sure that you always secure your stuff. Um, I can't vouch for all hotels and things. That's why I mentioned that always make sure you have a key and lock lock your, lock your bags and things. I can't say that we never had any issues and things like that, but I can't say that we have, I can say that we haven't had any issues on this Tanzania journey of room issues and things like that. But as you go to new hotels, that's the situation. So let's make sure all of your personals and your valuables are very secure and lock each time you leave uh, your room. Uh, that's the best thing I can uh, recommend. And everything I mentioned uh, probably is no different from us traveling anywhere in any other parts of the world. Do the hotels have safes in them? Uh, I can't say all of them uh, do. Uh, some do have safe. I remember uh, last time we was at the uh, Marriott Courtyard. I remember safe being in there. And I've never used any of them, uh, but safes are there. <laughs> um, yeah, because what I do honestly is... Um, I secure my bag to where, you know, your things that you need to secure. I have locks on every single bag and things like that. I'm not saying people can't break locks and things. It's like people can tamper with, um, you know, those um, safe boxes and things like that. Uh, but, but you know, I usually tell people to ease their mind, to secure your stuff, whether it's in a safe or whether it's in your bag, and know that once you lock it, you're good to go. And then if you come back and you see anything crazy going on, you let us know so we can find out what's going on. And that's not trying to scare anybody. Those things are not the things that we deal with as a people, but... Just want to let everyone know that we got your back on whatever the situation is and trying to provide the best situation so we can just not just be just, you know, where you just leave. You know, sometimes some people, you know, you, they just have all of the valuables all over the place and they leave the room. And so I don't want anyone to tempt anyone, you know, and you know, usually the hotel owners, they, they always vouch for their staff and things like that. And so, you know, so those are some of the security procedures also. Uh, number five, as I just go through this, uh, the tickets we talk about, five and six, just make sure that you have your travel dates, your tickets, your information uh, cleared. And if you see something that's wrong or not right or you overlook, definitely let's work on trying to resolve it. The good thing I like about uh, Delta Airlines is that any issue that you have, they're, they're always dedicated to fixing it. And any changes you need to make, they're down with doing it. Um, and they usually just work it to where it's minimal cost to work things out. Uh, seven, arrive. Uh, just give yourself always enough time to get to the airport. Um, I don't know how busy everyone airport is. This airport in uh, Atlanta can be crazy, but the good thing about it is, you know, there's a there's two different terminals. So sometimes I just go directly to the international terminals. Once you uh, get there, just um, just want to make sure everybody just clear, ready, and prepared to have all their stuff packed, organized, and that way you can just be at ease. Uh, so the next thing is eight, uh, check baggage, uh, Delta KLM. Uh, so the main thing about the, the check bags is 50 pounds. So I always want to make sure that you just either check it before, uh, check your weight before, or when you get to the airport, just get there ahead of time and just use one of their spaces just to directly uh, check uh, your weight and then move things around as you need. And you have two carry-on bags also. So um, the smaller the roll on or a backpack, you know, you just work your stuff in. But it's a short journey, so I don't know how people pack and things like that. But uh, definitely just think about those things. If you need to check an extra bag, uh, that's two hundred dollars. And if the the weight goes over um, from fifty one to seventy, 
Uh, they can charge you legally uh, extra $100. So those are things I have on there. And also as far as the liquids, uh, make sure all your liquids are basically uh, three ounces or less. Uh, so you always have to just look at those things. Other than that, uh, you get to a situation where you know you have good stuff and it just they throw it away. Uh, so also, so make sure all of those things that you question in is in your uh, check bags. So the next thing I have is uh this um the check baggage weight for precision air. So check bags uh, with fifty pound limit uh, for economy class. All right, so if you have two check bags, uh, you'd have to pay for the second uh, one. The bags more than 23 kgs, they're liable to charge you 10,000 uh, shillings uh, per kilo. So if you were to do a math of, let me see, that is 23 times 10, so it'd be 230,000 shillings. So that is roughly about 100 US dollars. So hopefully everyone can flow with me as far as that. So just want everybody just to be prepared on that. And that's the uh, link that I have right there that tells you about the uh, baggage uh, or excessive baggage. And then precision here, uh, two carry-ons. Uh, you can, you may have to, if you have a big carry-on, they may have to just um, you know, you know, plane check it. And if someone plane check your bag, please just make sure before you get off the plane, make sure they give that bag to you because that bag doesn't have a baggage claim, you know, information that they're going to send to baggage claim. You have to actually pick it up when you, you know, get off that plane. So that's how it works for the small uh, aircraft. Uh, so definitely want everyone to keep up with their bags and be clear on these things. And also, as we move through these sequence, like the ferry boat and also the uh, domestic flights, uh, these are things that we'll go over and make sure that we're prepared and organized. Let me get here. Let's carry on. That's nine and uh, 10. That's another thing, uh, luggage. So that should cover all the luggage. As far as luggage, I definitely recommend uh, you just bring in, bring in things that you want to get rid of so you can have more space. And then let me talk about the uh, combination of uh, red, black, green, and gold clothing and also white clothing for the ancestry day and things like that we have set up. Uh, so we definitely let you know clear, um, you know, when you know when will be a good time to wear those colors. I have a question. Uh, uh, sure, go ahead. I'm sorry. Is it a combination of the red, black, green, and gold or? Yes, because you know, it's hard for sometimes. So, so basically like um, red and black, and then somebody will be making, wearing green and gold and things like that. But it just gives a nice color coordination. It's kind of like, you know, the white is just plain white, but then, we have this color going on. So it's uh, it's one of our you know, ancestral energy uh, and things like that. We just try to create in a program, the solidarity and things like that. And then, so, so it's not like all black, all red, or? Uh, it can be any level of combination, whether you want to use one, two, or three colors, as best as you can, because it's, it's hard to coordinate uh, colors like that. Right, OK. Let me look on here, see where we are. And I talk about the uh, school, at 13, I talked about the uh, school supplies that we can, uh, uh, we can get those, get those school supplies to the, uh, the culture center that we're going to. Will, uh, Bomani, will they uh, receive or accept backpacks? Uh, yes, backpacks, anything that you can bring would definitely be helpful. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Those are reminders about supplies and things like that. Uh, so let me continue on, and we just um this uh, fourteen. I uh, bring in any necessary medicine and things that you may need. Um, this anything dealing with diarrhea, things like that. This anything that um you know could be helpful. Uh, everyone have different situations when they travel, and so you know you can kind of think about the things that you may need. All right, uh, fifteen. Our uh, camera slash camcorder. Uh, bring uh, extra film, memory cards, rechargeable batteries. Um, I talked about if you want to get a SIM card there in the country, bring an unlocked phone, uh, but you can get away with just using your US phone and using WhatsApp and then connecting to either the mobile net, the, the wireless network at the hotels 
or you can pay for your own Wi-Fi service, uh, calling your, your phone carrier. That way you can have consistent internet. All right, number uh, 16, and I'll, I'll scroll down through. Uh, travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bags, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. These are all of the things that uh, just have a, that uh, just literally just recommend you think about that way you can just you know, use it as a source of convenience. And some of these things you know, may just be obsolete, like alarm clocks, uh, but you, know, you can just always use your phone. Uh, 17, mosquito spray, insect repellent, centronella oil, um, which is an excellent insect repellent to avoid uh, scents. Uh, so I meant, meant to say avoid uh, wearing scented uh, lotions and this thing with a bunch of different scents to draw mosquitoes. See, but you're in that zone in uh, Tanzania where you know you know you have to deal with the mosquitoes and things like that. So if you want to get people, everyone prepared to be, you know, make sure that you order any kind of spray and or lotion and things like that. So. It, at nighttime, if you need to just go out and you know you're not fully just covered like you're a ninja or something, you know you just make sure that you know you you have your little thing to and you should be good. But those are some of the things that uh, you know I've seen that this uh, works. But you can always get a lot of these things I talk about there in the country. But uh, the goal is for us to limit our time and going to buy things that we can get here so we can have more time and do what we need to do. But yes, pharmacies and malls and shopping places uh, are close by. Uh, 18, uh, talk about the, uh, the Tanzania uh, conversion. Uh, so just use the, um, the flow of one US dollars is about 2,300 and then definitely bring bigger bills, uh, hundreds and fifties so you can get a better you know, conversion rate. And also uh, the machines, they take all kind of um, cards. So Visa, MasterCard are the most popular ones. Uh, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. So it's one of those things where yeah, you may need to do uh, you know, one of those international travel alerts with your bank. Some banks have that to where you have to do that. And then some banks just allow you to do it on your phone or they'll text you a message and see if you're the one that's really using the AT machine. And if you reply back that it's you and things like that, they'll let the next transaction go through. And then some issue, your cards may actually work the first time and then it'll be blocked the next day. And if so, then you can call a number behind and get it on block. But a travel, um, you know, setting up your, you know, your travel plans and letting, letting your bank know where you're traveling to, uh, that solves some of the problems. But even if you do, it still can be blocked and it's just their security measures. Uh, 20, uh, the weather's going to be nice um, uh, throughout the whole time frame. Uh, but since you're also flying on the aircraft, definitely you know, recommend you bring a sweater and or a you know, windbreaker or a jacket. And most of us are probably coming from somewhere cold anyway. Uh, 21, let's, uh, let's make sure that you're just mindful about taking certain photos of certain places, you know, government buildings. Um, in the airport, it's uh, more common now, but um, you know, the security people and other people don't want you uh, recording them. So if you're doing any recording, just be mindful and keep it close to you and, and things like that. And just, you know, and you should be uh, fine, but um, you do have one or two situations where, you know, some people may just give you a hard time and if they feel like you were recording them, you know, they may pull you to the side and tell you to show them the footage. And then the best thing for you to do is just to show them. And then if they're in it, just delete it. And that's security personnel. No one else can harass you. Or you know, or people who work for the you know department at the airport and things like that. Uh, twenty two. Um, I did put a link up for travel insurance for those who are interested in travel insurance, and this is one of the better companies that we found, uh, which is Alliance. Uh, so you can click on the link and you can just uh, find more details. Uh, toiletries including. Uh, Tissue, soap, napkins, uh, washcloth, beach towel, and things like that. Uh, those are things that you know we have on the list. Recommend that you bring, um, and you can also get access to them there in the country. But when you talk about beach towels and washcloth, I can never always guarantee that every hotel have washcloths, um, because as a matter of fact, it's just shocking when they don't. So 
I just usually tell everyone to just bring their own personal things that are small enough to where they won't take up much of your space. And it's always good to have a beach towel, especially since we're going to be going out on the beach. And then for those who don't have one, you can just purchase one. I'm sure people will be looking to sell you all kinds of things from swimwear to uh, all those things. Uh, 24, you're going to run into a lot of friendly people. I say this every time I talk about any specific country because um, everyone is your brother and sister. I'm not trying to be funny or disrespectful, to them, but that's the that's a good and positive thing. But also it's one of those things that could be, you know, you know, it could be not as generous as we may think it should be because, you know, and, you know, people are, you know, it's, you know, it's a country of commerce. People are making their sales and they're trying to do business and things like that. Uh, but, you know, we're there to enjoy ourselves um, and not really looking to make any deals with anybody or, or things like that. And for those who are looking to do any kind of business and things like that, that's where we have our, our staff there, you know, to, for, to consult with before any of us do anything. And the same thing I recommend in every other our country. That way you have familiar people that we're dealing with that can, you know, be in our best judgment because they don't want, they want to keep our business. So they want to make sure that no one rips us off. No one takes advantage of us. And even the tour guide, you can always just try to get them to help you with certain negotiations. He doesn't really like those things because then the people start, then the Tanzanians start speaking in their own Kiswahili language and telling them about himself, saying, why are you, you know, so he, sometimes you get caught in the middle of it, but Usually what he tries to do his best is just tell you on the bus and then if you need to just pull him to the side uh, so he can, you know, and, and work something out then, and, you know, he do his best to assist you. Uh, but it's one of those things where, you know, you have help and assistance to just deal with anybody. And if any strange person is stressing you out or pressuring you and things like that, you know, just reach out to myself and me and my staff will, you know, talk with that person. We don't want people harassing you and things like that. So we'll politely let someone know that, you know, you're enjoying your moment in your holiday and, you know, you have you have had enough shopping and enough things and you just want to be at peace and things like that. You know, something respectful because, you know, you, you know, uh, you want to show love and respect to the people who are trying to make a living and trying to also, you know, you know, offer us things and, you know, and things. But, you know, I always want us to be polite, but at the same time to make sure that um, we don't get too stressed. So if anyone needs to be a bad person and talk to someone, you know, even in a rough way, I would do it. Um, and you can just have your peace. Uh, 25, uh, some places at the resorts, uh, you know, you may want to do some cards, dominoes, uh, chess, general board games. Those are some of the things that we have on the list. So anyone that's uh, always open to bringing those things, you can bring them and we can always socialize. And uh, I talk about bringing any kind of medicine and things. And this is where I have a list of emergency items um, also. Uh, which includes some few medicines, so flashlights, basic first aid kits, laxatives, Pepto-Bismol, anti-diarrhea, things like that, any kind of emergency things that you may need. Uh, 27, uh, please focus on enjoying yourself. And our goal is not to let any other tour member or any other person, staff or myself or anyone to interrupt you just having the best time and you enjoying your paradise on your investment of um, joining the journey of a lifetime. Uh, 28, uh, uh, remember, no mandatory vaccination, so you're good on that. Um, but I always tell everyone, get vaccinated at their own risk. Um, uh, 29, uh, when you get the baggage scam, as I talked about earlier, when we talk about the itinerary, uh, just make sure that you have all your things uh, organized on your cart and uh, just take your time, get your money, and then proceed to the bus uh, with the tour guide uh, uh, guidance and the uh, driver guidance and whoever else they may have assist assisting us. Uh, 30, um, since we're going to historical sites and sites of African Holocaust, uh, if you wanna bring anything that will make your, make you make a special moment to connect and whether it's a candle or whether it's ashes or anything, um, you know, usually just put that on any list uh, for anyone to, to think about those things. So family, so that is the overview, the itinerary, and that is uh, also the preparation list. So I'm gonna stop uh, screen sharing and then see if we have anybody else that uh, join. Uh, uh, greetings Akuvi, uh, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. All right, is that you, Akubi? It's Romani. Hello, hello, how are you doing? You have two yeah. uh, connections, uh, but nevertheless, you have a... Um, 
it seemed like you're you're, you're playing two things, which is gonna cause the feedback. So work on close not one, and then on each track. All right, so greetings, family. Uh, so that was the uh, overview. Hopefully everything is clear and looks good for everyone. And just want to see if anyone have any questions and things like that, or anyone want to if anyone wants to dialogue about any of the things that we talked about. I do have a question. Um, in reference to the luggage, once can you not do a um a check baggage and do a, just a carry on, and a personal item? Yes, you don't have to. You don't have to mandatory check anything, and then you can always just bring some bags back. If you, example on the other end of the tour, if you just want to do a whole lot of shopping, at least you know now that you can just purchase two bags, and then you can pack them up, and then now you can you know make your way back. Uh, okay. But some people do travel one bag. Um, I call them magicians, but uh, nevertheless, uh, <laughs> some people can work those situations. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And suppose you check a bag, right? For when you check it at JFK, you don't have to worry about it until we get there, correct? The bag situation uh, is, uh, yes, that's the bag situation. So once you check your bag from your department airport, your bags, and that's why I use that connection with, uh, I was saying with Delta Sky team, because other than that, you'd have to pick your bags up in Amsterdam and recheck them, but the bags are going to go through, but uh, to not take their word or anybody word for it, the best thing to do is when they give you the tag before they ship your bag off, make sure the tag say uh, Kilimanjaro Airport. And so on the Delta system, that would tell all of the agents that's uh, picking your bags up that that bag needs to be forwarded to you know the, the KLM flight. Um, and to where this goes to Am goes directly to Kilimanjaro and it doesn't get left at baggage claim in Amsterdam, which would be a nightmare. Right. Uh, so, and that's one thing I'm always uh, leery of because the agents, they do make mistakes to where they'll do stuff. And, you know, for the most part, they don't, but it's up to us to make sure that we clear on those things. Right. Uh, okay. But if worst case scenario, if anything, this goes wrong and, you know, things like that, uh, once you we do a baggage claim file, they'll drop the bag off at the airport, at the hotel, I mean. So, yeah, so those are some of the situations we have had people get on their flight late and then their bags don't come until the next day. So we'll work it out before we all leave Kilimanjaro Airport. And these are things I'm never telling anyone to be scared of and things like that. I've been through it from, from cards getting stuck in machines and things getting, you know, and bag, you know, your bag is one of the few bags we're left and you know and things whether it's the holidays and things like that uh so the better we can have our things organized uh the better those things will work out and if things do happen you know, we have a way to make it work so the, the best recommendation ultimately is always going to be pack a few days of clothes in a check uh, in the actual carry-on bag in case of emergency i've been there it's uh it's the worst thing but um i, I blame mine my three-day delay on the whole December, Christmas, KLM overbooking flights, and then whatever went on in New York City with storms and frozen uh, runways and things like that. So, so that's why I like traveling in November because those things are not likely to happen uh, because of weather conditions. Uh, but I share them in general because people listen to these calls and they pick certain things up. So I was just trying to put out some good information. Okay, and also another question, the, um, the attire, the red, black, green, or gold, is that should be dressy or casual? Uh, casual, like, you know, you can something like this or a T-shirt. Okay. Because like when we're moving around, we want everyone to be as comfortable as possible because you're moving, you know, you're doing a little walking and you're moving around. And, uh, but if you know, if you want to be more casual, that's fine. Uh, I've seen people do all kinds of stuff and it's all good. Okay. Awesome. Seen people come out like they're ready to go to a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yes, that's a lot of our information. So everybody look excited and yeah. And we're just counting down the next two weeks. So just finishing up on the last things and just getting ready for it. It's been months since our last journey to Africa. So always looking for the next one and you know, let people know that, you know, we're keeping the, the energy flowing strong. Great. All right. So before we uh, close, um, that's why I want to make sure we just break things up to where we talk about certain things during the whole time. Let me know if anyone have any more questions before we close. Beyond that, anyone that ever needs to talk to me, you can just reach out to me during the daytime. And if I don't get your call, I can just do my best to call you back as we, I'm moving around. And 
beyond that, um, I'll physically see and meet everyone uh, in Amsterdam, uh, unless somehow I meet someone in Atlanta or New York, because that's where my two flights go from Atlanta to New York and then Amsterdam. And that was a question. Go ahead. Is the um, hotel's AC air conditioning? Uh, yes, all of the hotels have air conditioning and uh, hot water. And the bus as well? And the bus have uh, air conditioning and also we have water for you on the bus. Okay. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Imani. Uh, yes. The last, the last Zoom call we had, it was a big old issue with the plastic bags. And you mentioned plastic bags, not that we can't bring them, but everyone else, it was, I think it was the two people said that we couldn't bring plastic bags. So is it we can or we can't? If they want my plastic bags, they're just gonna have to take them, and that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but usually, like you know, have um, you know, you have footwear, and sometimes, you know, you travel, you don't always, you know, go, to, you know, go clean off the bottom of your footwear and things like that, which you know probably should. But you True know that, that it's going in a bag and with your other True. stuff, so you're gonna definitely just throw it in something and wrap it up. True. People who gave the idea, those are great ideas. Uh, some, uh, one of the best ideas was uh, Ziploc bags. Yes. I'm bringing mine, Bomani. Oh, this is the Kubi. You know I'm bringing mine. I tell everybody, I have garbage bags too. <laughs> oh, perfect, uh, Kubi, since I can hear you, I uh, just want you to give us a nice long introduction and you know, tell us about yourself. You've been, you seem to be traveling with us on every country that we go to. You're there with us in Senegal and Gambia, then Ghana this year also, and then now Tanzania. So I'm, I'm gonna just give you a nice five minute window and if you could just you know, share and just tell everyone about your experience and just introduce yourself and then also eugenia is your roommate so you can also talk with her well i'm not doing five minutes <laughs> good luck with that one okay <laughs> you can try 10 minutes i'm not i'm tired i'm tired well i travel many places with no money everybody knows that okay there's nothing much to tell really i enjoy traveling do a lot of stuff. Jack of a lot of trades, master of several. I love good food, good people. Everybody's there? Okay. Y'all Yo, can speak now. Don't be scared. I, I can't see you. I don't even, I, I don't see you. Yeah, uh, Kubi, uh, everybody did the introduction. I was just trying to get you to do your introduction. Yeah, that's right. Just a few things. I'm not going to do five minutes. You'll see me when time to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Scorpio like Bomani, and I'm very mysterious. That's all you need to know. Where are you <laughs> traveling? Where, where are you traveling from? I'm mysterious. Akubi, oh I'm trying to close the call and I'm trying to get you to do an introduction and say certain things. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you want to hold on for a few seconds. Come here. Yes, this is Bomani Dakari. Oh. Hello. You're almost, you're almost as big as me. I know. Hi. Hey, hey Bomani. What's up, son? Yay. <laughs> Hi, little one. Nice to meet you, King. Well, Prince, you're not a king yet. Prince. Not to meet you. He's very, very shy. I've been encouraging to, to say hello to everyone in the morning and afternoon. And But definitely he wants everyone to say hi and hello to him also. So at least you can see the around. face. Yeah, he's shy because he's not around his friends and he's around a lot of, <laughs> a lot of older people than him. Well, nice to meet oh, you, little mascot. Looking forward to meeting you. Nice to meet you. you. Too, 11 years straight traveling to Africa, nonstop from 20, 2012, 2012 to now. Oh my! From his team, but now thirteen. Blessed, right? Mm. Wonderful, right? You, you enjoy the experience. Tell them what you what you're looking for to eating in uh, uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar Island. Yeah. You you want your lobster at six degree south, Ooh. right? They they do this incredible grilled lobster, very expensive, but he has his money saved up to do, to, to enjoy it every year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Beautiful. So, Kubia, uh, uh, Kubia t turn on your uh, camera so Bomani can say hello to you. And your favorite person is coming again, Akubi, right? Okay. Right? 
right? You ready to get back to your arts and work and playing your video games? Mm. Right? Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. See you later. See you later, alligator. <laughs> yeah, it's a little tired. It came from boxing earlier, so he's just resting. But the good thing is they have school off tomorrow, which I don't know how they pull that off by, by you know, by <laughs> adjusting these school schedules. But nevertheless, that's a whole different conversation about uh, the school system. But Akuvia, let me um, Akuvia, if you can unmute yourself back, and let me know if you're ready to give your introduction. Romani, one question. Um, oh, go ahead. The son's school will be out when we when we travel. Uh, every everywhere we go, we travel. And school's out. Oh, okay. It's Thanksgiving. Oh, that's right. That's right. Do they celebrate uh, Thanksgiving? In yeah. Uh, some countries do, uh, and then the the uh, black people from America that uh, move to different countries. Some of them do, and some of them don't. But uh, oh. it's not. Uh, it's definitely not a popular thing in any of the countries. That I've been to is very okay. good to know. Some people want to bring certain things from America. And some people want to leave it. <laughs> right. <laughs> what's the What's the national dish over there? That is a great question. That is a honestly a great question. I'm I'm have to even text. I it. hope John yeah. rice. <laughs> uh no, it's not. It's not. It's not rice. It can't be rice. <laughs> uh -huh. What is the national? That's a great question. I'll make sure we get the answer for you. Okay. Is it Ungali? I can't say. I would, I would hate to this. Good. I think it's Ungali because I've been doing my research. It's, a, it's like a cornbread. And it's made with different stews, either beef stew, chicken stew, and even a bean stew. Yeah, that's one of their main uh, dishes. Uh, definitely. Uh, my tour guide, love, you know, I love that stuff. So when any when next person, when you get there, try it and let me know how it tastes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because when people travel with you, they want to experience all kinds of things. And to be safe, you know, you know, you just let me know how it tastes and things like that. <laughs> Certain things, uh, you know, I just don't really get with like, there's a list of things that on the uh, Ghana menu that you know, is just not really me. I'm more, of, you know, more of a, more of a fish uh, person, but some people do eat the different animals and things like that and with different stews. And the worst thing about stews is like, I want to know what's all the ingredients in that oh, stew. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. especially some people need right. to, to meat and things like that. And mm -hmm. when you're in most parts of Africa, the vegan vegetarian thing is not in a common energy of the country. Uh, so mm -hmm. whenever we do anything, as far as this gourmet meal or special order or just direct order, you know, you just, you know, you have to always be clear about those things. And also another thing, I know um, utensils, when you're having the dinner and everything, do you use the utensils? Or I know a lot of Africans, they just use their right hand to... Um, <laughs> no, because my son actually just married a Nigerian. <laughs> so how does that work? Um, the only thing I can tell people is that, can I have a knife and fork, please? I'm yeah, not, right. I'm not trying to be like, you know, sometimes people are like, some of us are bougie and things like that, but it's like sometimes I tell people, stop being so judgmental. It's like you're not the one, <laughs> not the one going from your yeah. culture and you know and, and going somewhere else and then having to just like be open to everything and give and I was like, it's not it's not that simple. So in the Gambia, I remember doing that and I would, and I mentioned that would be my the Gambia um was the only time I did that. That was once uh, that was this, it was me and my wife and a close friend of mine that we work at Delta Airlines and you know we're just and you know it was it was interesting, uh, but that was more for group meal, and the, and a family tried to pull that same thing with me in uh, in, in in actually the Gambia again, and I, I told the group members who wants to go out to have a regular dinner to do it because I don't want to be disrespectful to them because I'm not I'm just not gonna eat it and my my child is you know children are honest, right? They're gonna say that's not sanitary. They're saying that's not you know and things like that. So, but Martin, you know I went too. I was there. Yeah, you was you you finally speak. Excellent. Uh you you were there and yes, and, well you know that. So I'm always you know, I have that, each, you know, first of all to be disrespectful to your culture. So but you know, we're gonna be honest on certain things because we don't want to sit in, 
let me let me finish uh cool real quick we don't want to be just sitting there and then you know we are being forced to eat things that we don't want to eat and do things we don't want to do and i'm just against that and i don't want to put myself in that situation and anyone who don't you know we're not going to do that but people for people want to do those, have those experience you can always have those experience but in tanzania our situation is a little different i've never really seen that I, I would more like say as you saw my as that that's more of like uh west africa you know nigeria ghana and countries like that and you know people may somebody may send me a message and educate me about uh, east africa but i'm not familiar with that in east africa but then at the same time too only been into a few countries in east africa ethiopia kenya and also tanzania yeah but uh what you have is uh you have your own plate and your own meal and you have a knife and fork and for the most part we go out to restaurants or we order a nice little buffet at the um, hotel okay but, uh, i definitely don't want to do the thing like you know one of our guys on um you know that do all these tours uh as search for who um dino samir what they do sometimes they take you to more of a cultural traditional place and things like that but what i've found is most people are not feeling that it's kind of like when i put a bunch of traditional things on the um on the buffet and i kind of monitor to see who eats what and things like that people usually don't go for that you know you just accustomed to your menu and you just order something uh, you know gourmet menu so i find that a lot easier and give people a better experience and and so what i would say about traditional if somebody really wants that and want to do that i would say uh, akuvi probably say uh, good luck on that one right akuvi <laughs> yeah well i've done basically all of it you know but the situation is as far as you know eating with the group and stuff and you know i've been to most of west africa and you know all in school and stuff as far as hanging out because my hbcus and restaurants and between um the home events and the weddings and all that been there done that all of it but um but when it came to where we were in gambia at this time the point is you know how the area was and how the lighting was and where it was located and because of those different factors and what i saw that's why i didn't challenge it and so that's why i had to go you know to a restaurant in that case but then I think about how, you know, we eat different things over here, finger foods. Now, how many of us eat chicken wings with a fork and knife? So sometimes, you know, some of us are so, you know, bougie, but I have not seen any of us yet eat chicken wings with a fork and knife. We normally oh, use oh, our We're talking about finger. eating rice. We're talking about eating rice, the things that eating yeah. rice and eating well, a even, piece even of for that, Like I said, I've done it. I don't have any problem, but I'm just saying that situation, you know, the lighting and how the area was, that's why I wouldn't attempt it. And that's why I was with little, little Bomani when we said unsanitary, and that's why we went somewhere else, you remember? But I'm saying I've done it before, but I wouldn't have done it in that particular setting. Absolutely, and that's why I was saying the first time I did it was a different setting. You, right. Like, but nevertheless, I always appreciate that people that are very open to all kind of experience and eating things that I would never eat um, and, right. and things like that. But it's uh, what it is. Some of us have more of a restricted diet after a while. Yeah. And, you know, I have family on the continent, Ghana in particular. So, you know, been there, done that. Togo. There's a couple of times. Um, I'm sorry. The oh, couple, no, ahead, couple of times, the couple of times I traveled um, to Africa, Asane, I've always used a knife and a fork. Um I, I wouldn't oppose to eating uh, if we were in a traditional situation, but my experience has always been with knives and forks. Okay. Each is all. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, do you eat your chicken wings with knife, knife and fork? <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? Bumani, I don't eat chicken wings. I don't eat chicken. So, I mean, when I, when, I used, when I ate chicken, I ate chicken wings with my fingers, but <laughs> uh, I don't eat chicken wings. <laughs> uh, I do eat fish, but I don't eat chicken wings. <laughs> oh boy, oh, it's gonna be a great answer. <laughs> looking forward for the journey. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, definitely looking forward to the journey. So, really family, you can stop by if anything. Uh, we have gone over the bulk of everything, so I'll be working on our supplies now. Final setup. Uh, so I'll be posting messages in the uh, WhatsApp page and any updates and things like that. And, uh, you know, and so one last question. And uh, so what's going on over there in the Middle East? We don't have to worry about anything like that. It's not going to interfere with our trip and we're good to go. I mean, uh, it's, it's not something I can confirm in a reporter call and say that you're going to go somewhere in the world and just be completely safe from something else. Uh, I don't, um, for, for so far, 
whatever situation is going on with them is containing the area in the so-called Mad East, the, the, the that, whole that's right. area. <laughs> We're not safe here. But and, Monty, did you mention something about, um, I thought I heard you say Kenya Airways and then I heard you say Precision Air also, or did I hear wrong? No, Precision Air is a domestic flight from uh, Arusha to Zanzibar Island. Kenya Airways is a flight once you leave from, once some of us leave from Dar es Salaam, our flight will go to Kenya and then we'll get on a Kenya Airways flight and fly directly to New York. Oh, okay. And that's something that um, uh, we have three people that are connecting to New York. And, you know, once I found that schedule, I just changed it, set up to where it's smoother for all of us. And then some people are still going to Amsterdam. Oh, so some of us will be flying from Kenya straight to New York? Yes, uh, that's what your schedule should say. And how many hours is that? Uh, probably about, um, I don't know, what is that, about 10 hours. But I didn't, uh, yeah, I'm confused. Oh. Uh, didn't, you, didn't you check your flight schedule? No, no, sir. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> you, still have to, you still have time to change it. Yeah, once no, I'm saying once I give people a schedule, you have to like be clear on it and confirm because you know oh, not on anything else. Because I usually try to get that out of the way first and then start mm -hmm. working on everything else. So, but those are the things that I remember. But um, because I always want to make always make sure that the flight schedule is coordinated and organized. Um, so yeah, so um, uh, Kenya Airways is part of uh, our segment. Oh my god. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right i'm gonna check as soon as we get off and joel you're there um you're gonna be connecting to amsterdam still with um with asar and uh, one or two other people all right. so once yeah. we uh, once we meet up in dar Salaam, some of us will go different directions but paulette you and i should be on the same flight that's what i'm saying to paulette paulette uh asnet and joanne i'll put you on the same flight as friends is trying to coordinate to where you know to where uh johan get to new york with you on the same flight right versus right. her because what we that what we had was johan going to um amsterdam and from amsterdam going to atlanta so now okay. both of you can be on the same flight together all the way uh to new york now did you guys already choose your select your seats uh some seats uh can be selected all the ones on the delta segment so what i'm always advising everyone and you can still do it now everyone please just log into delta the Delta uh, information I sent you and just make sure everything is good. Uh, yeah, I already did. I already selected my seat um, two weeks ago. All right, excellent. Because you know, the longer you take to select your seat, they'll just give you something. Yeah, you don't want to sit in the middle. Yeah. So got uh, mine coordinated and uh, only one that uh, couldn't change was uh, Kenya Airways. Okay. So once I get to the airport, I'll just tell them what I'm looking for. And they should be able to do it. So the best thing for us to do is make our way to the airport early to where we check in early. And that way, when they, you know, we, when they start issuing seats out, we can just select what we want versus what's remaining. But once they do the bookings, they just, they lock seats down to where, right. you know, so you, you, so if you just the last person, you just get whatever the last seat is. Whatever the last, yeah. So, so those are the, the things uh, we talk about. So. Just make sure you're clear, make sure you organize, and I'm on standby. You can text me, call me, and I'll do my best to communicate back with you immediately and efficiently. And beyond that, I'm just working on this journey and then trying to get as much as I can get done uh, before before South Africa, because I only have like four weeks when I get back. And I want to make sure all those things are done. So I'm working on multiple things and getting people ready for next year, because if you wait till next year to get them ready, they won't be ready to the following year. Absolutely. <laughs> you're right. Bobani. Yes, Sakuvi, go ahead. Did you say that um you taking care of the precision seats on precision airways? Uh, they won't let me sit select seats. So okay. we, so we, we do that there, once we get there. Yeah, when we, we get, get there, there, they'll work the seats out. Okay. And so what okay. I did was just made sure I printed all of the uh, domestic information. So the only seats we need to worry about is from New York to Amsterdam and from Amsterdam to Kilimanjaro? Uh, you, as far as the seats, the only seats you need to worry about is the international booking seats. Oh. And note that KLM and the, your Kenya Airways um, 
I don't know if they'll let you just change it a few days before, but uh, for the most part, once you check in, they'll, they'll they can take your seats to you. So while you're at New, while you're checking in at New York, see if they'll give you your seats for your return flight, and things like that. Uh, and if they don't, that's just their policy. But that's just their weird situation. Uh, just like I'm going to South Africa, it's on Delta Airlines, and all of us have our seats, and it's uh, that simple. Yeah. But um. Well, money. Uh, yes. I was wondering if this was substitute for like a uh, oh man, the uh, uh, the the red, black, gold uh, t-shirt we're supposed to wear. Uh yes. Uh, okay, that will all I'm... work. All the colors okay. are blending. Yeah. All right. Good. The co the color sheet, the shirts that we're gonna be um getting is is it just white, plain white? Oh, uh, it's white with colors on it. Uh, colors okay. of the Tanzania flag, um, including okay. blue. Okay. Including How many shirts are we getting? Including blue and green. Excuse me. How many t-shirts are we getting? Uh, one each. One each. Can I get an extra one? I I'll buy it. I'll see if I can. Have a, I'll see if I can find an extra one because all these are orders done already. Okay. So I'll, I'll see what we can pull off for you. Uh, same size. Did I get an extra large? Let me see. Uh, yes, I want to say extra yeah. large. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the same size. Yes, uh, so that's what I have extra large because sometimes people request things for their family members. Yeah. So we will work that out. Yes, so everybody look excited. Um, don't want to hold everyone any longer, but thanks uh, for everyone joining the call and I'll do some editing to it and I'll post it for those who didn't make the party. Okay, great. <laughs> and, <laughs> and hey, hey, listen, Bumani, yes. can, I, can, I, can I put some nips in my... Um... They're not going through my suitcase. They ain't going to mess with my nips, right? I don't know what nips are, but I don't even probably want to know what nips are. But what I would say, <laughs> if you want to secure a certain thing, just secure them in your check bag. Secure them where it's good. Nips are in your check bag. Oh, in your check bag, yes. In your check bag, careful what you say. It's a recorded call. <laughs> All right. Ask me if I care. I just want to know if I can put like five or six nips in my bag. <laughs> Nips, what are like, nips? You know, spirits, spirits. spirits. <laughs> I don't know if we're going with you. <laughs> yeah, so the best thing I would recommend, um, uh, what I usually do is uh, I just usually, you know, if I bring a bottle or so or a bottle or two, I just do my best to just wrap it up in a certain way where regardless of what happened, it doesn't damage the rest of your things in the bag. Okay. That's what I would uh, recommend. And then if, you know, you want to take a little, the little small little... That's the one I'm talking. Those are nips. On the ones on the plane, that's <laughs> ideal to just take on the plane. I'm not saying that you should use it on the plane because they'll give you a lick on the plane. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's just part yeah. of the three. You know, it's less than three ounces, so you know you right. you're not limited to carrying it. <laughs> Whatever you do with that is your business. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you can put as much, uh, you know, things in your check bag uh, that you're gonna need to enjoy your time there. Mm -hmm. All right. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Nips. <laughs> that's what they. That's what they. Yeah, Kubi, uh, close us out. Uh, close us out, uh, Kubi. Uh, you want to share anything with us before we all go? Oh no, y'all have shared a lot. <laughs> with those nips, <laughs> on that not, on that note, nips out. <laughs> I'd absolutely so family appreciate everyone's time and energy and um, journey continues and uh, we'll connect back and look forward to seeing everyone in two weeks. Yay. Okay. okay. Have a good out. night, everyone. Blessings. Okay. Blessings. Okay. Blessings. Okay. Bye bye. This is the last Blessings. conference call, huh? Before the trip. Oh, Madam, conference call out. I can't. Think. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, next conference call is uh November tenth. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, a, it's a general conference. They're all different conference calls. Oh, I mean, conference. General. So okay. on that conference call, um, I'll just be talking about the different countries that we're traveling to, and I'll just emphasise certain things about Tanzania and South Africa and then the other schedule, and then okay. just try to talk about as much general things as um, connected as best as possible. Uh, okay. Based on who shows up, you know, questions and things like that. But that's the last conference call I have for this month, and then the last one I have for the year is December 10th. And okay. anything else is just private calls for different groups and different people that wanted to connect with me. Okay, we'll be there November 10th. <laughs> All right.
Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, because uh, we went over the information here. But uh, join the party if you want. It's all all good. Uh, I was looking to talk with people, but that's the only way I can really just share what we share by just doing these uh, calls and hoping that people don't think they're long enough and listen to some of it and see our coordination and what we're working on. Okay. And see the before and after, you know, us yeah. before we go and then get back uh, while we're okay. in the country. Okay. Well, you always hear from me, so no problem. <laughs> uh, yes. So family, appreciate everyone, uh, energy and support. And I'm uh, lo looking forward to this meeting, everyone, and for us to do another great journey in Tanzania. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. 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 B